No, I don't, I don't think it's working. I said, good afternoon, everybody. Are you enjoying Comic-Con? Have you got any energy? So let's try one more time. Are you enjoying Comic-Con? Everybody at the back, are you enjoying Comic-Con? That's kind of getting there. My name's Gary Howes, I'm from the UK Garrison. You may have been to our stand, which is just almost opposite where we are right now. Um, we're a, a Star Wars costuming club. Uh, basically, we go around the country dressed up as Star Wars characters and other characters indeed, raising money for charity. And we've just featured in a wonderful documentary that's on Netflix, if you haven't seen it. It's called Heroes of the Empire. I strongly recommend you watch it. And it's all about what we do. And I've been asked this afternoon to come up and explain that in a little more detail and explain how people like yourselves, if you want to get involved, can come along and join and be a part of what we do. Has anybody out there seen Star Wars? Now, you've not got this yet, have you? Let's try it again. Has anybody out there seen Star Wars? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Stand up. Stand up. Man over there definitely seen Star Wars. So, our costume club started way back when, in, at the end of the 90s. A guy called Graham Campbell, been a lifelong Star Wars fan, had always wanted to be a stormtrooper. Uh, there was stuff going over in the States, people were happening, and this costuming thing was starting to pick up, but it hadn't hit Europe yet. Oh, Doctor Who, I'm honoured. Um, I didn't know we had time. Oh, it was better than that. Uh, he started, Graham Campbell started up the UK Garrison back in 98, 99, uh, with a set of FX Stormtrooper kit that he had imported from the USA and it exploded. It was around the same time as the internet. Uh, the internet meant that people like me, you, and everybody else here today discovered we weren't the only ones that were into all this. And we weren't the only ones that read comics and watched movies and all the rest of it. And it slowly grew and grew and grew to what it is today, where it, it's just a phenomenal hobby. Uh, so I wanted to go into more detail about how we do it and what we do. And the easiest way to do that is to start to introduce you to a stormtrooper. Anybody want to meet a stormtrooper? Yeah. Oh, that's the best one yet. You're getting it. You're starting to get it. Come on. Say hello to the stormtrooper, everybody. Say hello to the stormtrooper, everybody. I'm, I'm hoping by the 20 minutes you'll even be so fed up that you'll just do it to get rid of me. So this is a stormtrooper, as you would see from the first Star Wars film, which later became known as A New Hope. What people don't realize about the first Star Wars film is actually quite a low budget movie. George Lucas had to fight to get this film made, and many, many people tried to pull it. It was Alan Ladd Jr., who was one of the producers, who actually put his neck on the line and made sure they had the budget to finish the film. Everything was done really, really low end and as cheaply as possible. The first Stormtrooper armor, actually, does anybody know what the first Stormtrooper was? was? Pretty much, actually. The first Stormtrooper that they made was a Sand Trooper, which had the backpack and the whole stuff. The backpack, as quite rightly pointed out by my friend there, was made up of cat litter boxes, plumbing parts, and all sorts of other stuff that they could cobble together to make it look like a working trooper, then they were dirtied up. But the actual first ones you see on screen are your traditional stunt Stormtrooper as they burst through the door of the Tanti Four, uh, followed by Darth Vader, and the whole movie opens up as we see. The armor, if I could ask you to just drop your arm for me. The armor is made up of all sorts of different parts. Um, I have an officer here with me today who's gonna bring on a body section for me. Bring on the book. The body. You just can't get the staff, you know. It's a Sunday and nobody wants to be here. So if I put my arm through there. So you can get a look at what he's actually wearing there. This is uh, donated to the garrison by one of the armor makers that we have in this country. Very good, it's based, uh, cast off of an actual suit. So it's as, it's as precise as you can get. I'll put it down on the front in a minute so you can have a look at it if you want, or you can come around the side, or better yet, come over to our stand later on. You can even try on a Stormtrooper helmet if you want. Take photos, there's blasters, all sorts. So you can see how this matches up with what he wore. 
what he's wearing. The thing about the Stormtroopers, they had to make something that 50 people could wear, and they didn't have the time to measure up 50 people, so they had to make something that was universal, that would fit anybody, which is why a Stormtrooper is such a great costume. Anybody can wear a Stormtrooper costume. Somebody of his height, my height, or indeed our other Stormtrooper who's going to come on today, say hello, Stormtrooper, again. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. The rest of you need to work. Um, if you stand, stand next to each other, come forward. As you can see, Stormtroopers can be any shape, any size. So if you want to join, don't think, am I tall enough? Am I short enough? Am I thin, fat, whatever? We can make it fit for you out of stuff like this, which is vac formed uh, plastic, which is exactly what the originals were made of. They're all components, but when they're put together, they look like that. The helmet, uh, which my dutiful Officer Jones, who's here today to help me, just take the pad out. Take that with you. The helmet is that. And it's light as a feather as well. You can easily wear it. Does anybody know how to put a Stormtroop helmet on? I want a volunteer. Who's a volunteer? Come on over. So you have to stand and face front for me. Can I ask you to take your glasses off? Because I don't want to break your glasses. So a Stormtrooper helmet. If you look at it from that way, it's wider there. So it goes on goes on sideways and turns, and now you have a Stormtrooper. Round of applause for our Stormtrooper. Uh, sadly, I have to take that off you now. Do you mind? Are you going to do it yourself? Turn it sideways? You're an expert already. So the Stormtrooper, um, the first Stormtrooper had nothing in the middle here. Uh, which was the sand troop that came on, they had the backpacks and everything else. And when they saw the rushes, which is the parts of the film they'd made before it comes out, they look at it, they check it, see if it's all working all right. They realized that some of the detail just blurred out because it was all white. So they started painting things like these buttons. They actually added two plates on the front that they could paint just so that they, it showed up some detail in the middle. Uh, these were added on the side to cover the black undersuit that they wear. They all used to wear a one-piece leotard, like a dance leotard, and then throw this stuff on top of them. The boots are just regular Chelsea boots. Uh, and actually, they weren't white. They were black boots that they painted white with household emulsion. So if you watch the movie, especially if you watch it on Blu-ray, you can see as they come through the door, they've all got black marks all over them. That's not where they've scuffed them. It's where the paint is peeling off. And they were topping them up on a daily basis, literally repainting them, as they were with the helmets. The helmets were made of a different material to the rest of the armor. It was made of uh, like a pond lining material. Uh, and as a result of that, they had to paint them. These helmets here are both cast off of an original helmet. Uh, say hello to Chewie at the back from our, our friends at the Imperial Outlanders. They're not, you're not very good. Chewie's like, upset now, you've not said hello properly. Um, the helmets are all full of lumps and bumps. These things were made very, very quickly. And because of the pressure George Lucas was under to push this show out, they didn't really have the time to refine things until the later movies. The newer movies, obviously, as you probably imagine, are not so low budget. If I could ask you to turn around and you stay facing forward. This here on the back, which is known as the thermal detonator, although why you'd wear a detonator on your back, I'm not really sure. Sorry, don't mind us. That's all right, no, go on, you go. You're not in the way. Um, the Furman detonator was made up of a piece of drain pipe, a regular piece of drain pipe, two drain ends on the end, and a molded piece to cover the middle to make it look futuristic. It was then attached to the belt with two aluminium strips. Can you? They don't usually let me have props. I'm making the most of them. So it's attached with two pieces of aluminium that were literally bent by two people in an office somewhere just putting them around the pipe so they could stick them on the back. It was all to add detail because, unfortunately, white on screen bleaches out really easily. If you don't have the little bits in between, you don't see the detail, which, to some degree, they relied on because, again, now with the Blu-rays, we, we know so much detail about the armors now because of the Blu-rays, because you can see that detail. And if you watch, again, 
the opening sequence as they came through the door on the Tanti 4 and Darth Vader comes through was one of the last sequences to get shot. They didn't have a lot of money and you'll see on the, on the troopers, particularly in this area and a couple of others, but particularly there, the areas where the plastic didn't flex as much, they used a very, very futuristic material that I'm sure everyone who does a costume here understands and knows. It's called gaffer tape. And you can see it all over the armor. The irony is, with what we do, I was very fortunate amongst with six other, uh, five other colleagues from the UK Garrison to appear as a stormtrooper in The Force Awakens. And one of the funniest parts was when there were 50 of us all standing together, uh, and it was a dream come true for someone like myself to actually be a stormtrooper in the film. It was fantastic. But what was hysterical was there they were, that many years later, still going along the lines, taping people up where their armor had spit with white gaffer tape. So it, that bit stayed, stayed all the way through. Um, what else have we got here? The undersuit, as I said, is just a single piece uh, dance leotard. Some of our guys actually wear two piece under armor, stuff like that, because it's temperatures and stuff like that. The holster uh, was custom made and it's very simply made. It's a, a piece of L-shaped lever almost just folded over and stitched and it's attached to the inside of the belt. It didn't have loops. In the later films it had loops but in the original film it was riveted on all for ease so that they could clamshell people into these suits. It was pit, um, uh, buttoned onto the front, uh, the people could step into it, they literally pulled the belt around, attached a couple of bits, they were ready. It was all about speed and getting these guys out. And if you watch the making of, you can see how quick they get these people dressed and get out. And there's one particular scene on the Blu-rays of the making of where they get the troopers out so fast that half of them fall down the ramp because they can't see where they're going. The helmets are just thrown on their head. They all had exactly the same piece of padding inside, which has this, which has disappeared. They literally cut out a piece of upholstery foam. Uh, they called it the star-shaped head, headliner. Everybody had the same. They had to try and fix it so that they could see, and most of them couldn't see very well. If you watch through the movie, there, there are various parts where they almost fall over. In fact, there is a part, if you watch very carefully, where one of them does actually fall over, trips over, because as Luke said, you can't see a thing in these helmets. We actually make sure with our guys now that we advise them to do it specifically to themselves, custom their own helmet so that they can see, so that we don't bump into people. And you'll notice when our guys go around, they'll always have someone like myself or Steve. Everybody say hello to Steve, because he's really shy, really loud. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Steve hasn't got very many friends, so if anyone wants to come and say hello afterwards. You'll always see someone like me or Steve with them because we just need to keep an eye on them because sometimes you put a helmet on, as my friend who was a volunteer earlier will, will attest, you can't always see very well, particularly not, your eye level's kind of about here. Anything underneath, you can't see. So we have to be careful and, and obviously make sure everyone's all right. We're, a, um, we're an all-inclusive costuming club. Anybody who wants to join, all you've got to do is get a screen accurate or reasonably screen accurate costume. We'll help to get it to fit you. We'll help to get it to make it work and to look the best it can. And we'll look after you and we'll get you out trooping. And the bottom line is we get out there when we raise, pre-COVID, we were raising about £50,000 a year to charity. An awful lot of money, mainly going to children's charities and, and uh, disabled charities, various things. If you watch Heroes of the Empire, you'll see a lot of where that money went. You'll see a lot of what we do. Hospitals, there is one particular children's charity that we do called Henry's Happiness, which is featured in the film and still will, it's the part where most people have come up to me today and said it's the bit where I had to get the tissues out because it is, is quite sad. We don't have very much time left and I really want to get everybody involved. It is a panel, so I should ask questions. I'll ask if anybody has any questions. If you don't, I've got to fill five minutes, so please, at least some of you have some questions. Please put your hand up if you have a question. We got one. I'm going to have to ask you to come forward if, if that's okay, because Steve hasn't got a mic. Have you got a... What's your question? It was an amusing story to the question. How do you go to the loo? The same as everybody else. I, oh, you mean when you're wearing it? I'm with you. You take it off, basically. Um, you, it's, it's really is as simple as that. The costume is very restrictive. It's not a costume designed to do anything that you would need to do. 
I will relay a story that probably you don't really want to hear, but when, I, when we actually shot it in the summer in Pinewood and I was actually wearing the new armour, we didn't need to go to the Louvre because we were so hot, we literally sweated buckets all day and it was just about topping up fluid where we can. Going to the Louvre was not a problem, passing out was a problem and I did actually see one guy in a snowtrooper in the middle of July literally just suddenly topple because the, armor, uh, the, the stuff they were wearing was just so hot. Uh, he just literally passed out. Something that we'll, when we get you to join, you have to do an induction with us. You have to go out and costume with us and we have to kind of educate you in a non-condescending way. That sounded really condescending. But, but just to make sure that people know that it is a lot of fun, but you need to be careful. And it's very easy, especially when you're in costume, in any costume. I see there's a guy there in a mask to stare. After a while, you will start to dehydrate and it can be unsafe. You need to take care of yourself. You need to make sure you're all right. It's all about fun. We all want to have fun. We all want to go out and enjoy ourselves and be the characters that we've always wanted to be. And there's nothing in the world stopping you doing that. Any, any character you want to be, you can do that. And, and Living Proof is this event here today. Read Pop, MCM, it's a fantastic place. Everybody gets to live their dreams. If you want to live, their dream, live your dreams in a Star Wars way or even in a, a real icons way, we have other mover characters and you want to do it on a bigger scale, come along to our table, come along and say hi, come along and look at some of the weapons, press the buttons, they all make noises and stuff like that, it's a lot of fun. Take some photos, ask some questions, and perhaps join up and get involved. It's a worldwide organization. We have 15,000 plus members worldwide. We have over 500 actual active members in this country. It's a lot of fun. I always say it's the most fun you'll have with somebody else's clothes on. For those of you that laugh, please explain it to the ones that didn't. Thank you. My name's Gary House. This is the UK Garrison. Any more questions before I go? We have a question. We have two questions. Ask this young lady first. Oh, you've got a mic. Steve's got a mic now. Okay. Steve, do you know how to work the mic? Yes. Hi, so I was just curious. I imagine a lot of your costume parts are like custom made and stuff. How do you make costumes or get the costume made if you lack money, are broke, and don't have like sewing skills? Uh, uh, the, the, if you lack money, don't have sewing skills, and can't make anything, that's a tough start. But it's not impossible. There's always a way forward, and if you're determined to do something, you'll always find a way, one way or the other, whatever it is. I would suggest with whatever you do, be it us, be it the Outlanders, be it whoever, there are forums on the internet for you to get involved in, to listen to, join, ask questions. And no matter what you've got, there's always somebody just like you who's got the same little amount of money and the little amount of sewing skills who may be able to advise you what they did and how they did uh, uh, achieve what they wanted to do. Nothing is impossible. It just may take a little more time and you've always got to stay positive. And part of the fun of anything is the journey. So if you set a goal to say, I don't know, make a, a Power Ranger or a Stormtrooper or a TIE Pilot or whatever it is, Take your time, enjoy the journey, enjoy making it yourself if that's what you need to do. And there are so many, 3D printing has revolutionized costuming for people now. Uh, 3D printers have become much more affordable. They're much more practical, much more usable. I've been told, and only I've been told, that even I could use a 3D printer. I'm not convinced, to be quite frank, but apparently you can. There are always ways, and there are always other people out there willing to help you. Because some people, their real enjoyment is not wearing the costume, it's making the costume. So if you can get two people together, one who enjoys making it, one who enjoys wearing it, that's the perfect marriage, metaphorically speaking. So I would suggest you just check the internet, it's a wonderful source of research and information and get onto forums and try and find like-minded people who can help you do what you want to do and achieve what you want to be and make you what you want to be. I hope they help. That's my pleasure. This young man had a question here. Did, did you work in any other armies like the scout troopers? We have scout troopers. I haven't worked on them personally. The guy who, who designed the stormtrooper armor is a guy called Brian Muir. He's a friend of friend of ours, friend of the garrison. He comes along, he helps us. Uh, the scout trooper, I can't remember who designed that off the top of my head, but it wasn't the same guy. But it was all made in a very similar fashion. The scout trooper is still vacuum form plastic. The big difference between the scout trooper and the stormtrooper is they don't have leg armor per se. They have bits 
but it, they, they've got to get on a bike, so they need to move their legs. These guys don't have that same flexibility. The Stormtrooper was designed to look really good and look really intimidating. It's not necessarily the most practical of costumes to wear. The Scout Trooper was much more practical than a lot of our guys. If you're interested in Scout Troopers, we've got a couple of guys over on our stand today. Go over and have a photograph and have a chat with them and, and chat with their handler, their crew member. They'll tell you all you need to know. And they have really, really big guns or really, really little guns just in their boot down here for when they're on the bike. Gentlemen at the back, Steve. So, do your members have to stick with the guidelines for honor as prescribed, or is it part of free to like make improvements on their own? It depends what those improvements are. As long as it, re with, with what we do and with what our club do, uh, we keep to a screen accurate look. So we, we try to represent and bring an element of Star Wars to your life. Uh, so if you come and meet us, it's like being meeting a stormtrooper from the movie. That's, that's the goal. Um, but it's your armor. You can do what you want to do. You can be as creative as you want to be. You can make it as unimaginable as you want to be. It, it, it's entirely up to you. Uh, as far as making the armor practical, all of our members will use different forms of strapping. They will trim it differently to make it more practical and to make it more wearable. And the forum that we have facilitates that for people because any problem that any of you guys might have Pretty much always someone's had that problem before. So you can go into our armory, you can sit and sift through what, what's been done before, all the recent builds, the, the, the more longer term builds, and you'll find someone's had the same problem. I'm too short, this doesn't fit. Well, there'll be another guy like me who's shorter, who's done certain things to make this thing work. And then there'll be a guy who's too tall, and in the same way, someone will have done that before, and they'll show you how to get over that hurdle, and maybe cut the armor in half and use the belt to disguise. The, the, the centerpiece here is all one piece. Um, some of the particularly taller guys will cut the armor in half. They'll use the belt to hide the, the, the black gap so that they can lengthen the whole thing. There is also armor makers out there now that will custom make armor for taller, shorter, thinner, fatter guys, girls, or whoever. Um, there are uh, female stormtroopers. We have many, many female stormtroopers, both uh, who will wear the original um, TK armor, as you see it there, or also who have uh, the uh, legacy trooper, as they call it, which is a female stormtrooper. So it's a custom designed female stormtrooper armor. So it's open there for everybody. I think we've got the Beetlejuice at the back. Last question, I'm afraid. Oh, no, I said Beetlejuice. Now I've said it twice. Don't say Beetlejuice. Now we're in what trouble. What was your experience like the first time you tried the suit? Uh, I, I can tell you a funny story. It involves his wife. The first time I put the armor on, this is a true story. First time I put the armor on um, and actually went out trooping. Uh, Steve there, uh, we're, we're very, very old friends. We've both been in the garrison for a long time. Him and his wife and a couple of other guys helped me to put my armor together. Uh, my first set of armor. We put it all together and I had a troop at a place called Toys R Us in Brent Cross. Great place, a lot of fun. Uh, I put the armor on. We then had to walk down a flight of stairs like you wouldn't believe. That was terrifying because I'd never done it before and I'm doing this kind of old thing because you can't bend. And when I got to the bottom, now there's a little, this front bit, a uh, back bit and this front bit attaches with a piece of elastic like that underneath. And mine had come undone. And it's up to the crew members to make sure that everything looks all right and you can't have a bit of elastic. And I got to know Steve's wife very well that day. It was certainly made the rest of the day very relaxed and a lot of fun. And fortunately, the rest of the day was all on a very flat surface. And we even had an X-Wing that was there at the time that Lucasfilm had put. We were doing a promotion for them. So that was my experience. And I'm, you know, you asked, that's not my fault. I'm being told we don't have any more questions. You can all boo at this point. Oh, there's no commitment from you lot, is there? Last time, you having a good time? Yeah. You're going to come back again. Anyone going to Birmingham? Oh, wow, no commitment. Birmingham's great. Go and see MCM in Birmingham. It's, it's, a, it's a very different event and well worth the effort. Uh, everybody say hello to the doctor over there, who I'm really impressed. Mr. Hartnell himself. Uh, my name's Gary Howes. If you've enjoyed this troop, remember my name. If not, I'm Mark Mulcaster from the Rebel Legion. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been fun for you. Say thank you to our troopers. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of Comic-Con.